Goldfinger, and for Spark, I've been working at Zipcar since the beginning of my internship. Um, before we start with the actual presentation, I just want to give you a kind of a background of the company itself. Uh, Zipcar is a car sharing company, not a car rental company. Uh, there's a big difference between these two. A car rental company is more like you pay a large sum of money, way more than you pay for Zipcar, to rent a car for a long duration of time, like a day, a week, so on. Uh, Zipcar is a car sharing company, which means that you're not really you're not you're not taking the car off for more than an hour or two, um, and you're basically in it with everybody else. You're sharing these cars with other people. You want to take good care of them. Um, you don't want to leave it dirty, which I see a lot of because I work in that department. Um, and you want to you want to present the car well for the next person because the next person might scan into a zip car five minutes after you drop it off the lot. And uh, the way it works is you go to the website, the Zipcar website, um, say you're a member, there's not a lot to join, any of you can do it if you're 21. So you go to the website, um, you go to the time of the, the time that you want to reserve the car, the time slot. It tells you all the cars that are available within that time. So you might have like a Mazda, a Nissan, tons of different cars, so you can choose which car you like. You reserve it for that amount of time. You have a card, and you can scan into the zip card with that card. See, you don't have a key. You have a card, and you go to the, you go up to the zip card. There's a little spot on the windshield. You take your card, you scan it, unlocks the door, unlocks the transmission, and the keys are already inside the car. Now this is interesting because if you think about it, you're probably asking, well, if the keys are in the car then why don't people just break into the zip cars, turn the keys, and drive off with them? And that's, that's something I was wondering as well. But, as I said, the key unlocks the transmission as well. So if you did break into a zip car, and you turn the key, it wouldn't do anything. You have to be a member. So that's a little bit about the company itself. Now I'll tell you about my experience. Hopefully I'll tell you about my experience. All right, here we go. So, the first thing that I learned, personally, when I was working for Zipcar, was that you want to get to know your colleagues, you want to get to know the people you're working with. This is one of the most important things in business. It's one of the first things you want to do when you're working for a company. And one of the best things to do to get to know your colleagues is the handshake. Now you might think, oh, that's, that's obvious, but no. The handshake can be mastered. You don't want to be giving someone a squid, this sloppy squid. <laughs> That's important, I'm telling you. Listen to me. You want to get to know your colleagues with a firm handshake, a nice grasp. You want to maybe flex the arm a little bit, look right into their eyes and state your name. And when they say their name, you want to listen very closely. Because I can speak for myself. When someone gives their name, you can forget it a second after they tell you their name. So you want to really listen to it and like, you want to use tricks, strategies to remember that name. There are many, so you can invent your own. Um, and then you want to maintain friendly relationships as well. You want to keep the relationship you have. It'll be a lot easier to communicate. Communicate. Communication is one of the biggest things in businesses in a successful company. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the beginning of my internship. So. I basically, I started out with the basics, just like anything. You gotta learn the basics before you go on to more complicated things. So, the fundamentals, um, the tutorials, and the fundamentals tutorials are kind of the same concept. Um, I basically started by learning uh, the programs that the company is centered around, and these programs are Outlook and Microsoft Excel. Um, Outlook, as many of you probably know, is a mailing system. Um, it has everybody's contact within the whole company, so if you need to send mail to any of those people, you got it. You can arrange events, um, meetings, dates, anything. So that's a very important tool. Not very hard to master, but I did take a tutorial on it. And Excel is a lot harder. Um, for the, for the, my needs, because I'm a beginner, I didn't really have to go too in depth with the tutorials. Um, but basically Excel, uh, you. It's a, it's a good way to store data. Um, you guys have probably all seen it. It's a big graphing application and you can store data within it. 
Um, you can go more in depth with it with like circle graphs and all that stuff, but I'll let the executives take care of that stuff. Um, and last but not least, it started with a lot of simple tasks. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of like, say a zip car had an easy pass and this wasn't recorded on the online website and somebody reserving a car wanted an easy pass. So I would enter the information for that car. So the next person scanning in could say, well, I want an easy pass on my car. Filter out the cars and choose the one with the easy pass. So a lot of simple stuff, but you gotta start somewhere. Okay, so I gained a little more trust with uh, the people I was working for. Still easy jobs, but I moved on to something a little more interesting, but pretty boring after a while. Um, obviously, it didn't look like that, the assembly line that I was working for, but it was basically an assembly line. Um, for a while, I was programming boxes. Um, you might ask, well, how do you program a box? But it's not the kind of box that you're used to. It's not the, the fold-up box that you're thinking about. I'm talking about, this is a term that we use in Zipcar for a cellular device that is installed into every zip car. And this is a very unique device. This is one of the devices that a lot of companies want to get their hands on, because it's Zipcar's zip unique technology that makes Zipcar who they are. Um, this device makes it so you can go to your computer, reserve a car, it'll send information to that car saying you want to reserve it, and it'll allow you to unlock it with your card. It's very unique. And what I did with these boxes is not very unique. Um, I plugged some wires into it, Plug two into the front, one in the back, push the button, and waited for five minutes for two beeps. So we go beep, beep, and then I could unplug everything. And then I did it 200 more times. There was 200 boxes that I had to program. But I didn't want to do it over the course of two days, so I just sat there for hours pushing this button, and it was a pretty awful day that day, but it was a good experience. And, um, Packaging car parts, um, another simple task. Um, basically, there are a lot of components that go into one zip car. Uh, we call all the components that make up one zip car, we call that whole thing a kit. So I was making kits, I was putting harnesses, tethers, all this, these weird terms you probably never heard of, into kits and shipping them off all over the country. So now it's getting interesting. So I've earned my trust by now. They're saying, okay, well, he's done a lot of simple stuff. We can move him forward to something a little more interesting. Um, so here's a job that I was doing for a while that I thought was really cool. I hope you think it's cool too. Um, so I was making phone calls to Zipcar dealerships, I mean Zipcar agencies all over the country. Um, I, I put Washington DC as an example up there. And I would call, and I would call up Washington DC um, say Bob answers the phone, say hi, how's it going Bob, this is Brian Goldfinger. Um, I would say, hey, I'd like to test your zip cars, and he'd say, okay, I'm going to go down to the lot. So Bob walks down to the lot, he goes next to his zip cars, I say, okay, and this is really cool. I went to, I went to the car page over in my office in Boston, and he's all the way in, in D.C., and I'm saying, all right, I'm honking, I'm honking Nissan Altima Fred. And by the way, every zip car has a name. I don't know how they thought of so many names, but every single zip car has a unique name, and that's a lot of names. I'm sure there's a couple jobs out there that are specifically just for making up these names. I don't know how they did it. Every single car has a unique name. So anyway, I'm talking to Bob and I'm saying, okay, I'm honking, I'm honking Fred right now, and I push honk on my computer. I push honk, and he goes, Okay, the car's honked. And the cool thing is I can hear the honk coming out of my phone. And it's really cool because I'm pushing this button for my computer and I'm hearing the car honk. You say, check. Say, I'm locking the car. Check. Unlock the car. Check. So that car is working fine. That box in there, the cellular device I was talking about, is working. And uh, that was a really cool assignment that I had for a while. So. One of the big things that happened at uh, Zipcar recently was that it was sold to Avis. Um, Avis is another car sharing company, big company, and um, when, they, when they bought Avis, it was a, I mean, when Avis bought Zipcar, it was a huge deal for Zipcar. Uh, it was a party, a fiesta. Everyone was going nuts. 
Um, it was a great day for Zipcar, and the morning after, which I thought was pretty cool to listen in on, because not a lot of high school kids get to listen to something like this. The morning after, there was a, uh, a broadcast to the rest of the company. Uh, there was, they put a TV in uh, my sector of the building, and they had each executive from Zipcar, and every executive from Avis, um, they had every executive of Zipcar, every executive of Avis, and they all said a little something, maybe uh, their path to success, or maybe they said something about the companies, and it was really cool to hear their take on it, because these are masters, these are pros of business. This is something that I aspire to be when I get older, so it was cool to see this in action. Uh, another thing I learned was to speak your mind. Um, this might sound simple, basic, but this is actually extremely important. Uh, it's just like anything in life. If, when you have a problem and you let it linger for too long, it's just going to get worse and worse. Um, so you got to learn to speak your mind to get rid of that problem as fast as possible the second you see it arise. And uh, here's an example of me speaking my mind. Um, so my boss, for a while, I was working with uh, universities, with colleges. I would deal with all the cars um, within the three colleges of Indiana University, University of Virginia, and Orlando. And I would get complaints for the car, missing gas card. I'd call up the guy in Orlando, say, hey, can you put another gas card in the car, et cetera, car not clean, uh, any of this stuff. And uh, for a while it was fine, but then there wasn't a lot of complaints with the cars. I was going into work and I was trying to find other work to do and I just couldn't because there wasn't that much stuff to do with these cars. So. So I spoke my mind. I said, hey, um, boss, I don't have a lot of work to do here. Um, can you help me out? And he gave me West Lafayette, Lincoln, Nebraska, Eugene, Oregon, and Madison, Wisconsin. So I have more than enough to do every day. So. so something I learned from that was that work is actually a good thing. Um, you might be saying, well, no, it's not. I hate work. I hate homework, and I wish my teachers gave me less of it. And I completely agree with you. But here's the thing. Homework is different. And schoolwork is different. It's, it's still obviously extremely important. Because it's, it's going towards your college. Like what college you're going to get into. Your education. But it, it's so much easier to be motivated when you're working for an entire company. Because everything you do as an individual benefits the whole, the whole company. That big building right there. So it's a lot easier to be motivated because you're actually helping others. Whereas in school, when you study for a test, you're just helping yourself. And it's not as easy because you're, you're not, you don't have that drive to help other people. So that's why I think that everybody should have the Spark internship. So as I worked with uh, Zipcar, I earned a lot of trust um, because they saw that I was a good worker. They saw that I could uh, complete the, the workload they gave me and that I was dedicated to company, so I moved forward. Uh, it's kind of a pattern. Once you earn trust, you move forward. So they gave me a new assignment. Um, this is a, actually a, a very, a, a much harder assignment. See, I started with the assembly line, and now they're putting me in charge of something that required a lot more thinking. Um, and basically, I had to help determine where the best location would be to put Zipcar either Zipcar agencies or add more Zipcars. So they put me in charge of all of those places that you see right there. And I was basically looking uh, for demographic information. Uh, for those of you who don't know that word, that's, a lot of, that's like population statistics. Uh, transportation, and uh, something that you might find interesting, or maybe you won't, but um, I think it was interesting, is that I didn't know this at the time, but it makes a lot of sense to me now. You actually want to put Zipcar where the most transportation services are. This might sound obvious to you, but for me it was like, why would you put Zipcar next to other transportation agencies causing competition? But if you're putting Zipcar in an area that's highly populated with these agencies, then you're guaranteed to have more people. And you want as many people in one area as possible to be using Zipcar. So that's, that was kind of a surprise to me. And then um, you're looking at a lot of densities, population densities, big business densities, basically areas where there's always a flood of people who are going to use your company, Zipcar. Uh, 
So last but not least, uh, I had a good time at this company, but now I'm telling you to spread the word. Um, Zipcar thinks that eventually this could be like the new thing. This car sharing in big cities, it's a way better alternative than, uh, sorry, alternative than, um, than having tons of taxis, having your own car in the city. This is much more reliable, better, cheap, way cheaper than what, what's going on now. So tell people about it and uh, help spread the word. And uh, that was my presentation. Fortunately, we don't have that car in the fleet yet that you see on the screen, but maybe if you join, we'll, we'll get the car, so. <laughs>